What we're doing now is we're going to see the mold liners, how to change a mold liner on the linotype, and also how to clean the molds. We turn the mold in, the mold around to the mold we want to fool with. I'm going to unscrew the screws. There's one screw, two screws. three screws. Once you do that, you can take your screwdriver and pick up on the mold, just get in the corner, kind of lift up a little bit. There's a notch in there that you can pull your liner out. There's the left hand liner. And on this side is your right hand liner. Now, what happens to these is they'll get metal on here or on the bottom and they need to be cleaned from time to time. Usually what I would do is take a piece of emery cloth and lay it down and polish it a little bit do the same thing for this one on the top on the bottom you need something like a pocket knife or an exacto and you want to scrape this side and make sure there's no metal on it and the same thing over here which i'm fixing to do because this one does have some metal in there so what i'm doing is just scraping this side knocking off any metal that's accumulated in there and the same thing on this other one Mama told me never to cut towards me, but I'm doing that right now. Okay. Liner looks good otherwise. And these liners are different. The One of them has a tip on this side and one a tip on that side. And they go in. This is your right hand liner. This is your left hand liner. The right hand liner on this end is your constant side. This liner over here can be different lengths when you put it in. So if you have a longer liner you put in there, then you have a shorter slug that it's gonna produce. So the ones that are in here now are 30 pica liners. So that means that it'll do a full length slug on here. A slug is 30 picas in length. But newspapers used to have them that were uh, down here so it would only produce a 12 pack of slug, a little short slug because that's all they set for a column of a newspaper. So you can get any measure in between 30 and I think down to 4 picas, which I've never seen one that short but probably 10 is the shortest I've seen uh, a 10 pack of slug. Okay now I'm going to wipe the oil off of this too because you don't want to put oil back in there with your mats. That's one of the big no-nos. Do not get oil on your mats or dirt. When they fall on the floor and you pick them up, wipe them down good before you put them back in. Otherwise, that's putting dirt back into the magazine, which is a no-no. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is take a reglet, a little wooden stick, popsicle stick works, whatever you've got. And this is a can of mold polish. What you do is you take a little, get a little mold polish on your stick. If it's too dry, you can put a little oil in here, but it's got a wax to it. And then you put it inside the mold and you hold it as flat as you can and you polish the mold back and forth. On, I'm pushing on the bottom, so I'm pushing down to clean that. And then you take it, get a little bit on it. You turn it over and you clean the top part. This knocks off any metal accumulation or dirt that's accumulated in the mold and polishes the inside of your mold. This is generally done if you have a mold that's sticking or it's having a hard time ejecting. You want to clean your mold like this. And then what I do is take a rag, wrap it around my reglet, 
and rub it in there to get out the excess mold polish that was put in. But you have some of that left over because you don't want to cast with that and have it get into your mats. Again, you're getting your mats all dirty and causing problems for yourself down the road. Now, we put our liners back in. Make sure you have the right liner on the right side and the left liner for the left side. And I push them in almost all the way till they're sticking out just a little bit. I want to be able to feel them where they're sticking out. Now you pull your handle back out. You tighten the screws down on each side. You again, don't get them super tight. Tighten one down on the other side. Now, the reason I don't tighten it down super tight is because with them sticking out, I want to take the butt of my screwdriver and pack, pack them in until they're flush with the front of the mold. There we go. And then do the same thing with the other one. Okay, now you can tighten them on down. And I only tightened the two outside ones before I did that. Again, Batman tight, not Superman tight. And then you do the middle one. Snug it down. And you do the one on the other end. Tighten it, and then you turn it back to where you want it. Now I want it. Now this machine is set up to cast one mold at a time. There were three ways you could set these machines up. This one has a one-quarter turn gear and a three-quarter turn gear. So what's going to happen when you first cycle it, this mold it's going to turn a quarter turn and come up to the top. So it's going to cast on this mold right here. Once it's up here and it casts, then it goes three quarters of a turn back to the same position and ejects that slug out. Now, if you had alternate casting, you would just have two quarter turn gears. So this one would come up, it would cast, and it would go to this position and stop. Next time it would cast on this side, go up, make its cast and stop here. And then that slug that you cast previously would kick out, but you would still have a slug sitting in this mold. What that was used for was if you only did two sizes, then you put the same size in both of these and the same size in both of those. And you could run faster because you're using two moles and it cools off quicker. They also put blowers on them to help with that. But sometimes you only needed the two moles to keep it going. Now, the third way of doing it is called progressive casting. You had one three-quarter turn mold, no quarter turn. So it would cast on this mold up here, make three-quarters of a turn, and kick it out. And then the mold that was at the top then, it would cast on that one, three quarters of a turn and kick it out. And it would walk its way around the moles, so you're using all four moles. But the only time, check printers used that a lot because they did the same size slug. Newspapers did it a lot because they did the same size slug over and over and over. So they didn't change to different sizes. But a general job shop used one mold at a time because they might have 10 point might have 14 point, they might have 12, they might have eight. And so that's when you want to use just single casting or use the progressive or not. This one again is set up for one casting one mold at a time. 
So we have 10 point type, I got a 10 point mold.